So I welcome you all to the webinar, which is uh, on the topic fundamentals of theory of machines. And we all encounter machines in our daily life, such as uh, automobiles, elevators, appliances, etc. We all see machines in some form or another. So as a mechanical engineer, one must have proper understanding of the kinematics and dynamics of machines in order to analyze or design a machine for a specific purpose, right? So I'll start with the basic concepts of theory of machines and explain various simple mechanisms, which are the building blocks for more complicated machines. So these are the contents uh, of my webinar. I'll start with the introduction where I'll formally define what a machine is and then some applications where we find machines and most of the discussion will be about fundamentals of mechanism and machines like kinematic links, chains, mechanisms and their inversions. Then I'll show one case study and a simple demo. Then I'll talk about some relevant softwares. So let's get started. So formally, I can define theory of machine now. Theory of machine deals with the study of relative motion between the components of a machine and the forces which act on them, right? So in theory of machine, we generally study the uh, kinematics and dynamics of machines, right? So theory of machine is a subject which is a part of a broader subject, which is known as mechanics of the rigid bodies. Re mechanics of rigid bodies, is further divided into statics and dynamics. So in statics, we study uh, objects which are in rest and in dynamics, we, we study objects which are in motion. Dynamics is further classified into kinematics and kinetics. So we all know to set, set up something in motion, we need force. So if we just study the motion without considering the force, then that study is known as kinematics. And if we consider the motion and we are interested in uh, forces also, then that study will be kinetics. But sometimes in uh, theory of machines or in mechanics, these dynamics and kinetics are used interchangeably. We uh, rarely see in the word kinetics, but we see kinematics and dynamics. So dynamics is also uh, used in place of kinetics. So in theory of machines, we generally study the kinematics and dynamics, right? So kinematics is the study of uh, machines or machine components or elements in which we are only interested in the geometrical consideration and we don't uh, go into forces and we are just interested in studying the motion. Then that type of study comes under the category of kinematics. But if we are interested in knowing how much forces are acting on the various parts, then that will come under the study of dynamics, right? So actually theory of machines or machines or mechanism, uh, I'll define formally later. But for now, you may uh, think that a machine is something which is used to uh, use available energy and transfer it into some useful work right and machine is constituted by mechanism but mechanism and machine these two terms are very frequently used in this uh, subject theory of machine so before going into that detail let me give you some applications of machines we all see machines in our daily life so some very simple machines like scissor uh, this is a classical example of a four bar mechanism. When we use our two fingers, then that two fingers uh, with a joint that completes this mechanism as a four bar mechanism. And, and this is used for cutting paper or clothes, anything. So this is one of the simplest type of mechanisms. This is a lever and this is a pulley system. And this is a form of wheelbarrow. So uh, these uh, four things are one of the earliest invention of machines. Like uh, when we want to augment our uh, work with use of some machines so that we can lift objects and transfer objects, heavy objects from one place to another. 
so these are the very early invention of machines right and now uh, we can see uh, machines in vehicles also like uh, a car it is a combination of many machines like ic engines a uh, steering system a transmission system a uh, windshield wiper so there are many machines or uh, many mechanism that are involved in a single uh, car right so a machine may be constructed as a combination of several mechanism similarly we see trucks and trains there are a lot of mechanism and machine inside that we also see elevators and this elevators has a very uh, powerful motor that lift this elevator right and that is lifted by a rope and this is also a machine we also come across some construction equipment like crane for moving uh, heavy objects from one place to other or construction material from one point to another point right so this is also a machine we also see uh, automated Uh, factory uh, assembly line where a lot of uh, robots are involved in automizing the uh, whole uh, assembly process right so uh, this is a robot and this is a form of robot right so robot is also a machine and one of the very classical example of mach- machine is the machine tool and as a mechanical engineer you must have seen Uh, a lathe machine a lathe machine has several mechanism also involved in that so there is a job which is holding the chuck and which is rotating and there is a tool which is holding the tool post and that is translating so there are several type of motions involved and machine mechanism involved to uh, give a proper form of machine in order to uh, serve the uh, specific operation right we also see machines in appliances like refrigerator a refrigerator has a compressor which is a machine similarly we have mixer grinders that also has a motor which is a machine so basically a machine we, we, we wherever we find something which can transform available energy into useful work then that is a machine we also see machine in air conditioners uh, also air conditioners has compressor that is a machine we do see clocks so clock is also a example of machine where the required rotation of the needles is provided by the mechanism of gears right and we do see printers which has uh, some mechanism which uh, say, uh, which pulls the paper inside the printer get it printed and deliver it to the output tray right so and also we see mechan- machines in shop floors like in workshop here is this is a um, fixture where we hold the job for machining operation or maybe in simple operation we, here there is a lever if you rotate this lever this jaws will come together and hold the job so basically either machines or uh, machines is uh, actually the difference between machine and mechanism is in terms of the desired output if the desired output is power of work then that is a machine and if the desired output is more motion then that we call and that we will call as a mechanism right so but these two terms are interchangeably used in theory of machines so if we just rotate this lever this jaw will come uh, closer so there is a motion transfer in this uh, fixture similarly there are many medical equipments like a mri machine like a dentist chair and there are several sophisticated instruments that are used in uh, uh, surgery so there are several machines we do come across every day right so we do see machines in our uh, daily life so these machines influences our lives that is why it is important to study them so this topic or the subject theory of machine has a very important uh, value in studying mechanical engineering right so now let me come into the subject by defining a mechanism and a machine so a mechanism is a combination of several bodies connected in such a way that the motion of one body causes a predictable motion of other bodies right so in in this definition 
there are some important points like the most important point is that the motion of one body causes a predictable motion of other bodies right it it, it can't be a mechanism when if you move one body in a mechanism and you can't predict the motion of other bodies so for example i have shown here a slider tank mechanism right so suppose you are giving a slight rotation to this link so this link is also known as crank right if you give rotation to this link this link is connected to this slider so this slider will move in this way right towards the left so for uh, input there is a definite output of motion so in, mecha in mechanism we don't uh, uh, talk about forces or energy we just talk about motion so mechanism is a combination of several rigid bodies connected in such a way that the motion of one body causes a predictable motion of other bodies similarly if in another way if you give a slight push or pull to this slider it will rotate this uh, crank right so in either way in first condition this crank was an input link and this slider was an output link in second case you can have this slider as an input link and this crank as the output link right so first case is the case which constitutes the ic engine where sorry the reciprocating pump where the crank is an input and this slider is an output and in ic engine this slider or piston is an input link and this crankshaft crank which is connected to the crankshaft is an output link so again there is another uh, simple mechanism known as four bar mechanism it is just uh, constituted with four bars so there are four bars we see uh, only three bars here but this fourth one is a fixed bar right so this is one two three and four there are four bars so if you give a uh, motion to one of the link like if i give motion to this link two this link is hinged here so it can only rotate so if you give motion to this link two then all these links link three and link four will have a definite and predictable motion unique motion right so this type of thing where several links are uh, combined together are known as mechanism and they give some definite and predictable output motion a machine is a mechanism or a combination of mechanism which can transmit or modify the available mechanical energy into desired work right this is the formal definition of a machine i have already uh, told some and basic thing about machines this is formally defined here right so in in this uh, animation you see there is this is the animation of a ic engine right so in this there are several mechanisms involved so the basic building block of this ic engine is the slider crank mechanism this piston is a slider and this crank is the link to which is making a complete rotation and this th link is link third which is uh the connecting rod right so this machine consists of another mechanism that is this cam follower mechanism so here you can see this is cam follower mechanism right so this cam follower follower mechanism is also designed in such a way that at a particular time this opens this valve and a particular time this closes this valve right so this is an example of machine so by this single machine ic engine we can find several machine which is the basic uh, mechanism or machine for uh, this uh, ic engine so since we study theory of machine and we start with the kinematics first we understand the kinematics then we go into the dynamic studies so kinematic study of kinematics involves the basic thing that is degrees of freedom so degrees of freedom is the minimum number of coordinates required to completely specify the motion of all points in a body right so suppose for example there is a particle 
this particle p and it is in a space so it is a particle you will need only three coordinates and this coordinate uh, axis x y z to locate the position of this particle at point p right now suppose if this particle is moving and it goes to another point suppose this point is p dash and the coordinates are x dash y dash and z dash so if you uh, know only these three coordinates right or to mm, define the position velocity and acceleration of this particle completely we need three coordinates so the degree of freedom of a particle in a space will be three right so it is a case of three degree of freedom and suppose the same particle which is moving only in a plane right so we are restricting it to move in the third dimension so it will have only two coordinates x and y so by uh, defining a coordinate axis and noting the coordinates x and y we can say that we know the position of this particle at every instant of time so only two coordinates will be required so it will have a two degree of freedom right now coming to a rigid body rigid body first way let me define a rigid body rigid body is a body in which the, suppose this is a rigid body and there are two points inside this rigid body a and b right and this rigid body is uh, uh, moving or in motion so if the distance between these two points a and b is not changing with time then this is a rigid body right this is the formal definition of a rigid body so in theory of machine we mostly consider rigid bodies right we don't consider the deformation actually ideally there are no bodies in nature which are exactly rigid all bodies at some uh, extent they are uh, deformable right but the deformation is almost negligible so we don't consider deformation we consider every uh, links or every body involved in the mechanism or machine as a rigid body so now there is a difference between a point and a rigid body a rigid body can rotate also about its own axis right so we can define the position of a rigid body in a space with three coordinates right suppose this position is x y and z and this rigid body can also rotate about its own axis so if we define another axis x dash y dash and z dash then this rigid body can have rotations about this uh, these axis also like if we suppose we say theta phi and uh, psi so total six number of coordinates will be required to completely specify the uh, all uh, position of all the points in this rigid body so it will have a six degree of freedom but if we uh, constrain this rigid body to move only in a plane right so this is the case when the rigid body is in a plane so if we constrain this rigid body to move only in this plane then we will require two coordinates two for position and one for rotation right so this rigid body cannot take rotation in other axis it can rotate only about this uh, a, sorry this third dimension is z axis this can rotate only in about this z axis right so that this uh, the body is completely inside this plane only it is not changing the plane so two for the translation and one for rotation so finally we will have three degree of freedom right now we come across links in um, theory of machines so let me just give an example suppose this is a link right so if this link is moving in a plane so let me define this plane by this x and y so this link is moving in a plane so it will have three degree of freedom right two for translation and one for rotation but suppose if i make a hinge at one end like this then this translation is restricted so before there was two coordinate of translation one in x direction another is in y direction 
and one coordinate for rotation. But you, if you hinge one point of the link or this rigid body, then it can have only rotation. So only one coordinate theta will be required to completely specify the position of all the points in this link. So it will have just one degree of freedom. So in theory of machine, whatever links and uh, or in simple mechanism like uh, four bar mechanism and slider crank mechanism. So all these mechanisms has generally one degree of freedom, right? Now these uh, links can have some uh, type of motion and these type of motion are classified in three categories. One is pure translation, then pure rotation and complex motion. In pure translation, one board rigid body, if this rigid body at some time t moves to another position at some time t dash and any two points in the rigid body, like if you join two points a and b by a straight line this straight line at t dash is parallel to the original position or any line in the rigid body moves parallel to its initial position then that type of translation is known as rectilinear translation it can also have a curvilinear translation but in all position this original a b is parallel to the intermediate a dash b dash Suppose in this position, this will be the position of A and B. So at this whole rigid body is moving in a curve, right? But any line in the rigid body is moving parallel to its own initial position. So this type of motion is curvilinear translation, right? In pure rotation, the whole rigid body rot just rotates about a single point single point this may be a hinge point or maybe any point in the rigid body or maybe outside the rigid body so uh, if this rigid body or a line a b on the rigid body rotates right about a point and only coordinates required to uh, define its position as a function of time is theta then this type of motion is known as pure rotation right so one point in the rigid body or uh, outside the rigid body, if you that is fixed, that has zero velocity, and every other point will have some velocity. So this point which has the zero velocity is also known as instantaneous center of rotation. And we may have the more general type of motion like complex motion, in which it is a combination of translation and rotation. So in this classical example of slider crank mechanism, this crank, this crank is in pure rotation and the instantaneous center of rotation is this hinge point, right? So this crank is always uh, rotating about this hinge point. There is no translation in this crank, right? Similarly, uh, this uh, slider, this slider is only reciprocating or this is moving in a straight line right so this is in the condition of pure translation but this connecting rod or this link is in complex motion it is translating as well as rotating in this position it is in this uh, in this way in some other position it will it will be like this in some other position it will be like this so it is rotating as well as translating right so uh, these are the types of motions 